as we were talking about obsessive compulsive disorder um, this is the part 3c of it let's see what happens uh, we were talking about how distressing how intrusive and how pushy this whole thing is all about and it urges you to perform specific acts and rituals that you can't even control you don't have any control over it because as we read in on, on page 105 it says that it's a compulsion that is why it has the name obsessive compulsive disorder so it has the compulsion it has the edge it has the impetus it has the 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 the, the power to push you to perform specific acts or rituals that you wouldn't even want it to yourself but you are doing it because the thoughts are very pushy very overwhelming very controlling so you have to do it so if you are out there and you are experiencing this and it's over and over it's, it's been persistent for over six months and it's something that is weighing you down please go and have it checked out because it's very very serious it is because it escalates it moves from one level to the other and it's going to escalate from one to two to three and when it gets to the scale of ten it means it's uncontrollable you can do something that will end your life sorry to say that because sometimes it goes to that extreme so please go and get some help book an appointment with your GP let them have a referral do a referral for you to see the psychologist and then ultimately the psychiatrist so that you have some sort of diagnosis and some treatment you need it because this thing escalates and go to a bad sort of area that will really destroy you it comes slowly and then it intensifies to a very difficult situation that you will find yourself in it affects roughly around three percent three percent of the population worldwide so that is the statistics three percent the global population we are about um seven billion so three percent of seven billion population globally is is a lot so which means a whole lot of people are clinically diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder everybody has just a little bit of it but it's not a clinical sort of um, disease it hasn't gone and beyond or gone beyond the clinical stage yet but three percent is what but I know that it keeps going up it keeps fluctuation it keeps fluctuating sorry so it might go up or it might go down so I'm thinking it's going to be going up because of the situation that we are in the COVID-19 era of 2020 is really pushing people about and it's not funny at all so let's carry on with this the OCD which is obsessive compulsive disorder thought pattern may be likened to superstitions in so far as it involves a belief in a causative relationship where in reality one does not exist so as we were going on about it it might be superstition and that is what brings about the rituals so you might think that oh this is the cause maybe some spirits are maneuvering me some spirits are controlling me is that intrusive that persistent and is that compulsive thoughts and therefore it's likened to superstition superstitious beliefs especially in Africa we believe most of these spiritual things like the witchcraft like the voodoo um, somebody is going to cast a spell we believe that sorry cast a spell on you that everything that you do wouldn't amount to anything 
Some will say that riches are hunting me down so that everything that I touch is not working for me. So we have the superstition. So whereby the superstition turns into the obsessive compulsive disorder, then it means that it's going to really hunt you down because there's nothing like that, but because of your condition, because of your symptoms and syndrome, you are going to have a tough time because you believe what is not there. As I said in my earlier video, that it's like a mirage. You walk to that place and then there's nothing there. But you see it from afar, but when you get there, there's nothing there. So this is a very worrying situation. And sometimes when we discuss and deliberate things like that, it's not funny at all. So people out there, if you think that your friend, your partner, your wife, your daughter, your son, your mother, your father, your friend, any relative, any bad person closer to you or even yourself is going through these challenges and it's persistent and it's gone beyond the reasonable time, six months and over, please get it checked out. Let's carry on as we move from here. Often, the process is entirely illogical. It doesn't even make sense, but you keep on doing it. You know, some of the rituals that I will say I've seen in my experience of mental health, some of these people that are diagnosed with OCD, they come and wash their hands as many as over 50 times, 50 times a day, in my experience. And some of them bathe over maybe 10 times or 16 times a day because they, they feel that thought, that persistent thought, that compulsive, intrusive thought is telling them they are dirty. So they have to wash. So they keep washing, washing, bathing, showering, showering, and showering. And some of my experience of those clinically diagnosed, uh, you get into their room, They'll keep arranging their um, toiletries over and over and over and over again. It's like the whole day they keep arranging. This is whereby it's clinical. They, they, they've been diagnosed. So which means that them ones, they, they are proper cases. That is part of the 3% of the population. They are the diagnosed one. But individually, some have it, but it's not up to speed to that extent of those that are diagnosed. So that's how it is. So um, it's, the processes are entirely illogical and they, they, it doesn't even make sense, but they think and they feel that it, it, it is very sensible, it makes sense, and therefore you cannot deal with somebody with OCD when they are trying to complete their rituals. In my experience, you don't have to even confront them that why are you having a shower 20 times a day? You confront them, you worsen the situation. But there's a point in time that you need some sort of talking therapy with your staff to sit down and talk through it so that it minimizes. And as it minimizes, it gets that sort of therapeutic level that they need because 20 times is a lot. So if maybe it's reduced to 10, at least um, they've gone so far to sort of cut it down. And um, let's go along. So, for example, the compulsion of walking in a certain pattern may be employed to alleviate the obsession of impending harm. So, you see, it's quite a very uncomfortable situation. So, somebody might decide to walk in a swagger way like that. And then that same person is going to think that by walking like that, it's going to stop their thoughts that somebody is going to shoot them or somebody is going to punch them or somebody is going to spit on them or somebody is going to kick them or somebody is going to headbutt them or somebody is going to insult them or somebody is going to poke their eyes or somebody is going to slap them or spit on them. 
So it's that intrusive thought. It is that worrying, distressing, and you know, persistent thoughts that doesn't even make any sense. So you see, it's a very critical condition. Let's continue on the next um, part. 